Stacy Rohn from the Boys and Girls Clubs. Good morning to you, Stace. Hey, good morning. Okay, it, it has nothing to do with your shirt, John, but I have no sound in my headphones. Oh, I bet you're not plugged in. Oh, well, hey, that, that would be why. Yeah. No, I think I am. You are? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. How about now? You get anything now? Ah, there we go. All right, now you yeah. have sound. All right, that you works. have to start all over again and be clever? You know what? I, I caught it all okay. because I could hear without the headphones. Oh, I was going to say, be but. thankful you couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> it was just those two bickering over there. Uh, too funny. Yeah. You, guys, you guys have way too much fun. You should double their salaries. Well, I'm going to add another zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the front and back. <laughs> yeah. Where they're covered at both ends. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, are you guys still driving an electric car? We are. Yeah, we which, are. which kind do you have now? Uh, we have a Tesla and a Volt. Tesla and a Volt. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have any gasoline-powered cars at your home now? We do. We So Rick's DJ truck is a an Honda Element, and I think he'll cry on the day that that goes kaput because that has – you have no idea how much you can fit into one vehicle until you take all the seats out of a Honda Element and cram a ton of DJ equipment in it. A lot of stuff goes mm-hmm, in there. For sure. Yeah, probably less than, like, say, 30 years ago when you were cramming turntables and gigantic speakers oh. in there. Thank the Lord right. that we do not have all of those things anymore. We used to carry um, LPs, at, at albums, and crates. Mm-hmm. It was awful. I still I have under my steps in my house are all of my old LPs. And years ago, someone said, "Well, just throw those away because no one's going to use the albums anymore." Mm-mm. But that's not correct. Like bell bottoms, baby, they, everything comes back. True. Right. True. We have we have cases, milk crates worth of yes. uh, albums when in was the, the basement. La- when was the last time you bought an LP? I wish I knew the last LP that I bought, but I'm sure I was probably in in the 80s, college, probably maybe when I was in college. I know yeah. I know I bought like a, a a remaster of Born to Run. I was I was I went to Duquesne, which is about I don't know a couple miles uh, from Pitt, and I was up in Oakland where Pitt is. You just go right up Forbes Avenue from Duquesne, and that's where and then you run into Pitt's campus. Mm-hmm. And then Carnegie Mellon University is like right across the street from Pitt. And they had these great record stores there. They weren't name brands, you know, like Tower Records and Sam Goody's and that kind of. It's just like this independent that you'd find on a college mm-hmm. campus record store. And I found like in the bins this uh, half mastered Born to Run edition of Springsteen. Oh, cool. And I'm like, I, it was like $5, I think, at the time, <laughs> which was a lot of money back then. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought it and I was like, oh my goodness. I st- I, that, and that's in that crate under my step somewhere. I think that might have been the last album that I bought. You may want to pull that out and see how much it's worth now. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. I, I do wonder. I have, I have like the original Sports Illustrated of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird from the uh, Michigan State, Indiana State NCAA championship game of what was that, 79? Yeah. I have that somewhere in, in a box under the steps too. Okay, so I've been I've been working on Rick for years. To, let's get rid of some of this stuff. Yeah, my he, wife does that to me too. He just sent me. He texted me said, and I'm not getting rid of them in <laughs> knots and all caps. <laughs> Hang tight, baby. Don't get rid of that stuff. Yeah. You never because you never know. That's the yeah. reason my baseball cards got to be worth so much money because everybody's mother threw them away, right? Pe- right. Boys had boxes and boxes of those things, and then. You know, you you go away to college and you come, but where's my baseball cards? Oh, I threw those away. And the next thing you know, it's worth $5,000. I have a friend whose father sold Topps baseball cards. Mm-hmm. That was his job. And so Vince, my friend, had cases and cases of mint baseball cards. He'd been collecting. He's of a certain age now, but, you know, going way back to his childhood. Um, but his wife threw them out. His ex-wife sure. threw them out. Uh, uh, out of part, spite? Yeah. And... I don't I, I don't know what that would have been worth, but more than a little. Oh, that seems like a lawsuit. Not kind. I will not, Rick Roan, I will not throw your albums away. You, you've heard it here. Right here. We got her. <laughs> it's recorded. Yeah. Three different sources. The 45s, maybe, but the albums will keep. I wouldn't even throw the 45s away. You wouldn't? No. Okay. Because you never know. That's All the right. thing. Jim Bohannon, when he was alive and doing the overnight talk show, used to have a record guy on who would come on once a month and he would tell you what the valuable albums and and 45s were if you had them on a certain label with a certain mistake or in a certain color remember they used used to release albums or or 45s in different colors like a gold one or a red one or whatever right you know and and if you had one of those Hmm. it could be worth some ridiculous amount of money to a collector Listen, I, I think I speak for every husband out there. Trust us. <laughs> Trust us. Thank you, Matt Harvey. Sure. 
<laughs> It'll come back. <laughs> yes. Okay. We, we well, know what's valuable. Let's talk turkey, Stacey Rohn. Let, let, let's talk for, about what I'm really here to talk about. Yes, your electric cars. Go ahead. No, yeah. not it, we like them, but that's not it today. So um, some good stuff coming down the pike with Boys and Girls Club. So I'm happy mm-hmm. to share. Uh, the first is a great big thank you to Senator Manchin and Senator Capito for the uh, – we made it in the congressional appropriation for $2 million. And Congratulations. Well, hold that thought. It, it depends on whether the budget gets passed. So we just need all of Congress to pass the budget. Um, but if that happens, so that's going towards our capital campaign to renovate the building that we're in downtown on the corner of Queen and John in our Martinsburg Club and then add a ground-level gymnasium. Well, I don't want to rain on your parade, but after the Fitch downgrade of the country's credit on its debt yesterday, I can guarantee you that budget isn't getting passed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Except you know, the $2 million. That's going to skate that through. We hope, we hope for that. Yeah. Um, but that's a big accomplishment. We've never asked for that that funding in the past. And um, and it was, you know, it was a labor of love for sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, provided that the, the powers that be can carve out some, some budget for us, we would you know, we're going to do great things with the with the funds that we would receive. All right. So you're relying on Republicans and Democrats to get together to pass uh, some legislation. So yeah. what's your backup? You know, plan if on this? we if we can teach children how to get along, then you know I have hope. Yeah. Well, I have hope. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got. Yeah, I know, um, I, and I feel bad for you because you're going to rely on these people in Washington D.C. to come to agreement on something, other than hating on each other, and investigating each other, and that's just so yeah. difficult to bank on well yeah. you know we have to believe in something mm-hmm. so there's that so two million two so. million dollars is a lot of money where would that what would that go into so we are anticipating that our overall campaign is going to be between eight to twelve so that's even more money it's, it's a big lift right yeah. right um we do have some some wonderful donors who have already committed and we're just we're working through the process and we're working with an architect right now on the design um, so that we can determine, you know, what's realistic, what can we do. So does the Boys and Girls Club own that building or does the city own it? The city of Martinsburg currently owns it. We're in discussion about um, possibly the transfer of that building. But all these years, we've always maintained the facility. So it's, you know, thankfully we've had um, CDBG, Community Development Block Grant funding, that we could use for that. Um, but, you know, we've also invested some of our own capital into improvement projects as well. Stacy Renna is with us from the Boys and Girls Clubs. How many years have you been working on this project? Um, on, Trying working, to get this whole thing improved and upgraded? I, and, I mean, yeah, probably for 20 years we've been doing wow. different projects within the club, um, whether it be renovating a kitchen or um, or the gymnasium that we currently are in, which is on the third floor. So anything quiet that you try to do on the on the second or on the main level or the ground floor is, um, you know, it's kind of moot point if you're trying to do something quiet mm-hmm. with balls bouncing above your head. Um, but you know, and and then all the way down to our most current was the bathroom renovation, and that you know. For, for the old timers that would come to the club and see what those bathrooms looked like, um, it's it's pretty amazing to see the transition that's happened through the years. And I mean, that's been the work of a lot of great board members through the years. I mean, starting with Bobby Miller and Alan Henry from years ago that I remember. Um, and it, you know, it predates us. It's, you know, Jack Beavers and Mike Allen were always working in that building to try to get, um, you know, to try to get it to an appropriate um, look and feel of a facility that that serves children. Was that Bobby Miller from Miller Electric? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. very yeah, nice. Bobby and Bobby and Alan, um, in some of my earlier days, were were pretty instrumental in some of the bigger projects. I think Matt, you might have even been on the board at that point with some of those guys. Yeah. Uh, what uh, activities and fundraisers and such do you have coming up before the end of the year, Stace? So, um, well, we're wrapping up our summer program this week, so mm-hmm. that's that's exciting. We, you know, we didn't lose anybody. <laughs> you know, everybody had a great time, and um, 
we're getting ready to go into the school year but we do have an event next Friday inside the huddle so for all the Mountaineer fans uh, we invite you to come out we have the event at Rick Pill Rick Pill Dave Pill and Terry Hess it's on their property down along um, along the Potomac and thanks to those guys for offering their their place because it's gorgeous I mean we we've had some really great times down there through the through the last couple of years and um, and it's this is if you want to know what's happening in West Virginia sports this is this is a year to come I'm sure Tony's gonna have a lot of a lot of information to share mm -hmm, very nice yeah. and you run all three of the counties in the panhandle correct right how many kids does that entail right now I mean we're in rebuilding so you know we're under 400 when we were in you know in our heydays prior to COVID we had over 1100 kids so we're just building back up to that does it look like you'll get back to 1100 or do you think that that dynamic has changed? I think we will. Um, I think it's just it's a matter of letting the community know that you just reminding them, hey, we're here. I know like our teen population, that was um, that was a little little tenuous um, or a little challenging because we lost so many teens out of COVID who said, oh, I don't need to go anywhere. I'll just stay home. And parents were like, well, you know, they've tried it out. They've been here. Um, the things that they miss are those, you know, those critical relationship building skills where they have to actually talk to other kids. You know, it's it's not a let's sit here and text each other from the, you know, we might be in the same room together, but sure. we're still communicating. Um, and that's I think that's the beauty in the clubs is it puts people in the same space. We um we always do a national youth outcomes initiative survey and it's really a survey of our kids to say okay what are we doing well what do we need to improve and we always get the highest scores in adult relationships because the relationships that they form with uh, the mentors and the staff in the clubs are i mean that's really special and um you know to be able to hear their feedback and say you know these are the things that are important to us uh, you know, as we did, as we do a lot of this renovation work, we also look at safety and child safety. And that was another area where, you know, physical and emotional safety, our scores, as we, you know, as we improve our facilities and we have um, better sight lines and supervision, it's, you know, it's, it reflects in their opinions and um, what they felt like we were doing better. Did you do a Morgan County upgrade of the facility in the last couple of years? So we actually moved our Morgan County facility and we're in a new building now, mm -hmm. uh, which we purchased. So we have some, some income because there are renters in that building. So we also get some income um, that's coming in from that. And, um, and the space is beautiful. And when I talked about sight lines in our old building, we were in the, in the old Morgan County um, elementary, one of the elementary schools. And um, just to be able to look from one end of the building to the other, there's a couple rooms that have glass, so you can see kind of what's going on from room to room. And um, and the kids love the space. It's it's clean. It's it's just a really beautiful spot. Mr. Harvey. So th there's different challenges with trying to attract the students, or it's not students, but the the mm -hmm. kids back to the clubs. Is has programming going to change, or has it already changed to try to accomplish that? And somewhat, I lap. So another piece of, of great news, and Matt, you or, or Rob, you said something about um, you know lots of grant writing, mm -hmm. and thankfully we have we have a good solid core, a good staff that helped to get that done. Um, Amber Glennon is our director of ops and grants management, and she she's our our 21st century community or 21st century community learning centers guru so she writes the education grants and we were awarded um, two grants um, just we found out day before yesterday so that was another reason why I wanted to just come and share some of the good uh, we so we have an elementary school grant that is in four schools um, Hedgesville Hedgesville Burke Street Winchester Avenue and Orchard View Intermediate and then we were invited to write for a teen or a middle school grant, which is hopefully going to help with that teen population. And um, we'll be at South Biddle for that one. So, um, and, and part of that too is finding engaging programs that make kids say, oh, I want to go there. I will, I'd like to do that or learn more about that. So in partnership with Region 7 Workforce Development, 
um, with the Youth Workforce Program. Um, we partnered to purchase, um, it's a VR headset. So you can actually try out different occupations in a virtual reality space and see if you like them. So that's, that's, you know, that's another really cool function. Okay. What what kind of occupations do you get to try out with VR goggles? Um, so I was fighter, prosecuting attorney. <laughs> I was playing with <laughs> yeah. them yesterday That'd because be we had to make sure. I mean, we have to make sure that, that our people know how to use them. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put this headset on and figure it out. So I changed oil yesterday. I used <laughs> I used a fire extinguisher. Not, so, but not if you have an electric car. You don't have to change oil. I do not, but I know how. I mean, after after going through the through the um the practical application yesterday that's pretty cool uh, i but in all honesty i would probably still take my car to get the oil changed if i needed to because if you change it yourself then you have to find a place to dispose of the oil exactly you can't just dump it in gilstrap's yard like you used to be able to <laughs> when he wasn't home john go ahead man what are the demographics of the attendees at the Boys and Girls Club? Does it skew towards the little kids, older kids, very rich kids, good, poor kids? Very good question. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, first I'm going to put this, this out there. The club's for any kid. Um, our mission is really goes towards those who need us most. But think about a kid who comes from a two-parent household, but both parents are working, and they don't come home to this area until later in the evening. They might ride the mark, or they might um, come in later. So the club's a space, a safe space for young people ages 6 to 18. And right now, yes, John, we definitely have the younger set or the younger population of young people. But as we renovate the club, we're expanding the teen center so that so that we increase the square footage that is just exclusively for teens. So are there buses that run from the elementary schools to the uh, from, Boys and Girls Club? Mm -hmm, from some of them. Uh, we So with our 21st Century program, we will bus them to the club. They stay at the school sites for about an hour to an hour and a half, and then they get bussed over to the club. And one thing that we found is that if we have um, teenagers who have younger siblings, uh, we were finding that it, parents, it was harder for parents to say to their South Middle School child, go ahead and just walk to the club because they didn't have care for the elementary kids. So so the goal is we looked at kind of that catchment area where South Middle and Orchard View and Winchester Ave and Burke Street kind of come together. And, you know, we were able, now we're able to kind of look at the entire family and then bring them in and then um, this is a pilot we're trying it out is to provide transportation back home to certain access points so that you know in addition to getting them to us with on the school buses we'll be able to also get them home stacy run our guest from the boys and girls clubs david anderson asked if there's a long-range plan for a boys and girls club headquarters at the martinsburg club i'm not sure what he means by that do you um so our corporate office right now is so we did move our corporate office over to Cox Holiday Young um, in the in the downstairs of that building, mm -hmm. and the goal is that we would put everything back kind of back together um, at the Martinsburg location. But also keep in mind, like Rob, you you ask about other counties. We're in all three counties in the Panhandle. So like when I leave here today, I'm headed to Morgan County. Um, so we definitely travel to all three clubs so we have a presence in all three communities do the three different communities jefferson morgan and berkeley have three different priorities of demands that you see from the kids are they different in geographical scope i would say yes um you know, you'd like to say well a kid's a kid's a kid no matter where they come from but you know sometimes it's situational i mean we might have a family who is in the middle of the opioid epidemic and they need Camp Mariposa, which is our um, is our stay away camp and um, program that's offered for children who either have a parent or uh, or they're being a parent in active um, recovery or they're being raised by a relative caregiver or foster care because opioids have invaded their their family or their community. Um, so, you know, it could be that. It could be that, you know, it's a child who really needs some academic support. So it just, it really depends. We try to tailor it so that each child has their space and their place within the club and that they can be successful. 
Stay Does that answer your question or? Kind of, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, I, I was looking more for, you know, the Jefferson County kids maybe are more into, on average, more into this a after school and the Morgan County kids kind of get into this activity more. Berkeley so, does this. Okay, so I can I can answer that. Um, and I'm going to say, you know, Morgan County, you think about, oh, that's kind of an arts community. And, and sometimes it's dependent upon staff. The staff that we have create some of the programs that we see. So our, for instance, our Morgan County director has a master's in fine arts, or her, her background's in fine arts. So they do a lot of art, artists, you know, art, artistic projects. Um, in Berkeley County, you know, it's always, it seems to have been, you know, it's the gym program. But we've also noticed that our young people have some um, social emotional needs. So we've added in some you know, mindfulness and yoga and programming that, mm -hmm. that really speaks to that. How are your staff needs at the moment? We need them badly. Um, so a lot of our, a lot of our staff are college kids who were in for the summer. So they're going back to their universities or colleges and we need to build up again. So um, if you know anyone that is interested in working with young people, it's one of the best gigs in town because you leave every day with, you know, a kid giving you some kind of positive that you can take home. Um, and it's Monday through Friday in the afternoon. So we would need someone there uh, roughly about 2.30, 2, 2.30 until um, 7, 7.30. Are these paid positions or volunteer? Some of both. We, um, we, we need, we need, so you know, people always say, are, is your, like, is your staff an all volunteer staff? And, you know, a lot of organizations that are able to do that, you know, I, I admire them, but our kids need stability. They need that same person that's coming every day. And, you know, when you put a paycheck on, on the end of that, it, it tends to help give them incentive to be there every day. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of where we are, but we accept volunteers as well as um, paid staff. When I think of boys and girls clubs, I just the, the cliche in my head is a big gymnasium and it's all about sports and, and physical activities. So two questions, really, mm -hmm. obviously I'm wrong, right? So, so, and the other, there is no wrong question. No, there's no wrong question, but my presumption was wrong because there's a lot more mm -hmm. to it than that. But in the, the heels of COVID and all that staying at home and inactivity, are you finding that there's less interest in the athletic activities among kids these days? Um, I would say no. I think I think the kids gravitate to the gym whether and and we don't, you know, we don't structure our programming where it's only basketball. We have a variety of different um sports activities. I talked to someone about um introducing pickleball to them. So that's, you to know, kids? To kids. Wow. Yeah. Why not? Everybody though? else seems to love it. Yeah. Right? I I think it's a growing thing that, you know, that adults and kids alike could could really enjoy. And you don't need a lot of space. Mm -mm. Right. Yep. Fairly confined area. Stacy, about a minute left. What would you like our audience to know um, about it, the Boys and Girls Club? If you are interested in coming to Inside the Huddle, um, you can go online on our website to pick to purchase tickets. Follow us on Facebook. If you ever question, hey, what's going on at the Boys and Girls Club? You can find everything that you want to know from a programmatic perspective to, um, I mean, really fundraising any of our activities they're out there and you know i would encourage anyone that's on social media to come check us out um, john the invitation to come and see the club is is out there i would love to show you either during the summer when it's full of activity or ne even next week when we are we're starting to wind down and get the club transferred over to school year programs. We'll, I like that. Will there be sports memorabilia at Inside the Huddle? There will be. There'll be sports memorabilia. Um, Tony always auctions off an opportunity to come on the air with him and be his co-host. I won that one so, year. Did you go? I, I didn't follow up, but well, I did win it. Well, you should follow up because I, it's a lot of fun. But, um, yeah, definitely come on out. and um, That's and how he got his co-host gig yeah. here. He won a contest. That was on my resume. Really? really? <laughs> no. <laughs> if, Matt, if Matt successfully prosecutes you and puts you behind bars, he gets a co-host gig on this show. That was the contest. Oh, wow. So, well, surprising. Congratulations, yes. Matt. <laughs> he did a great job. Stacy, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Stacy Rome from the Boys and Girls Clubs.